Papua New Guinea is an emerging nation with vibrant cultures and a hopeful future, but it is in need of practical support at this early stage of nationhood. Although a resource-rich country, very little of the wealth reaches the poor. Over one-third of the population live below the poverty line, 90% of the poor live in rural areas, and one-third of children under five are malnourished. Thousands of tiny communities are divided by language, customs and tradition. Many of these communities have engaged in low-scale tribal conflict for generations. In 1945, the De La Salle brothers came to Papua New Guinea. They stayed at great risk to themselves and provided then, as they do today, the basic ingredient necessary to build a new and independent nation, education. That's what the Lasallians are all about, and their work is supported by the Lasallian Foundation. This is Kunjigul in the Western Highlands, at the opening of a new classroom funded by the Lasallian Foundation. Thousands come down from the hills to recognize the importance of this simple classroom that is a symbol of continuing development for their community. Having the classroom means that it's something good for them, something they can look forward to, that from there they can advance using the classroom. Because having meaning that having a proper classroom, meaning that you get a good teacher, meaning that there's good learning taking place. So that's, it means that it's progress for them. It's been a hundred of hands I've been shaking this afternoon. Brother Thomas is the driving force behind this project. He was born and bred in the area and used to walk four hours each way to school and back, so he knows the problems. <laughs> I'm really focused on the kids and their education. That is my uh, view and my dream that they all get a fairly equally uh, education as other students in other parts of Papua New Guinea. In Mainahana, the Lasallians provide education for boys and girls in a remote area where they would otherwise be denied secondary schooling. We actually take students from about 23 different primary schools. They're all rural and most of them are very small. We're the only high school between here and Moresby, or if you go north, you go up into Gulf Province before you find another high school. The school is the only one providing vocational training, literacy and agricultural experience in the area, but high rainfall means it is regularly cut off from major centres by flooded rivers and impassable roads. My first year here in 2006, the road was cut for five weeks, we couldn't get into Moresby. I think the isolation is a fairly major factor. Also in many ways it's an advantage, we don't have the the problems that many of the other PNG schools have because we're isolated, uh, the students tend to be from their local villages and the cultural links to their villages are very strong. So I guess if the high school wasn't here, they'd finish their primary education at the end of 6th grade or 8th grade in some of the schools and then they would return to their villages. The villages haven't really got much opportunity the girls would go back into raising families, working in the gardens. The boys would go back to what most of the boys do out here, which is generally not, not very much at all. Hohola Youth Development Centre in Port Moresby targets children who cannot get a high school education because their parents are unable to pay school fees or there are simply no places available in a poorly resourced government education system. Through future employment opportunities, the centre provides an alternative to the lack of opportunity and grinding poverty they would otherwise face. We place an emphasis on art and music and drama to build up their self-confidence, because they've all, in a sense, failed. And then we, we give them uh, skills for, in hospitality, in secretarial studies, in metal fabrication, and in carpentry, and um, in One of the problems we have here is being able to get students uh, to come to school because they, 
they have the opportunity to come from all over Port Moresby and they do come from as far away as uh, 35 kilometres and that costs a fair amount per, per day. And it's not uncommon for students to have to pay two to three times in bus fares what they actually pay in our school fees. If the students weren't here, then uh, basically be, be out on the streets with, with other street boys or street girls. And that, once they're out in that area, the difficulty of putting up with temptation of, with, with other students is, is uh, very great. So uh, they, they may be in trouble with the law. They, they are, in a sense, uh, friends with these people. But because they do come to school, they, they can put a bit of a difference between them. Now, the little settlement is over these mountains on our right. Um, we're going to meet a lot of the children there. These children, some of them are orphans. Um, many of them are um, abused children, uh, children living in very distressed conditions. They go hungry sometimes for days at a time. They have no hope of, uh, of going to school. The number of children like this in this small city of Port Moresby, nobody really knows. It's estimated that being between five and 10,000 uh, children, which is an awful lot of children. Father John Glynn has been working in Papua New Guinea for 46 years. His latest project, Badi Hagwa, is identifying and addressing the needs of hundreds of orphans and abused or neglected children covering eight settlements around Port Moresby. What we're trying to do is to support the community in its efforts to answer its own problems and find its own solutions. But we keep emphasizing the problems belong to the community. The solutions are to be found within the community and we are there to do as much as possible to give support and practical help. In Mount Hagen, the Lasallian Foundation partners Rebjamul Youth Centre in offering respite for parents and children from the settlements. My name is Shelley, and I work as a um, program manager here at Youth Centre. We have uh, maybe almost 15 preschoolers and 13 kindergarten. It encourages basic education for preschool children and offers women a safe place where they can talk about domestic violence and health issues. The children are from our surrounding communities, village and from the settlement, the urban settlement around the town city. Its many community activities help break down the tribal divisions that are prevalent in the settlements. Many times, like um, Brother B been telling us, that we are not the only one in the corner of Mount Again. We have similar people like us and youth centers like that run by the brothers all over the world. And we are doing the uh, same simple thing. And the biggest thing that I inspired is um, the brothers kept telling us that you are not isolated. This is only a brief look at what can be achieved to help the poorest of the poor in Papua New Guinea. In particular, it is about capacity building through the education of boys and girls from creche to senior level, technical and vocational training, teacher training and agricultural development. Many families cannot afford any schooling for their children and the brutal selection process means that for every year after grade nine, half the class will be excluded from any further government schooling. Without skills, they will have very limited opportunities in an increasingly complex world. The Lasallian Foundation believes that every child can be helped by reaching out to them, one child at a time, and creating sustainable pathways to break the cycle of poverty. Well, 
if I had my wish, I'd like to start a school that was based on the revolutionary concept. It would be designed around the needs of the children and it would take into account their situation in life, which is a pretty revolutionary idea. But uh, I'd like to give it a go. <laughs> to turn around the lives of more children and to develop strong communities that can support them in the long term, the Lasallian Foundation needs your support. For more information, or to make a donation to help the disadvantaged children of Papua New Guinea, call the number on your screen, or go to lasallianfoundation.org.